Welcome, one and all, to the Lame Design Conference, where in each edition my esteemed guest and I will take turns in attempting to pitch the worst possible video game to you, the fans at home, whilst a professional graphic designer and artist illustrates said pitches over our inane ramblings. The contestant who can pitch the stupider, more diabolically unenjoyable game will be crowned the winner by you, the audience, via a poll that will be linked in this video's pinned comment and active for a week after the video is release. If the winner is my guest, they'll be placed into the Hall of Lame at the end of the following episode. And if the winner is me, I'll go out and buy myself a milkshake and look very smug about it. Let's meet today's contestant. Hello and welcome to the Lame Design Conference, hard drive faithful, ladies, gentlemen, everyone in between. In case the intro didn't do a good enough job of uh, giving you the elevator pitch for the series, effectively, uh, myself and my lovely guest here, who I'll be introducing in just a moment, are going to take it in turns to pitch the worst video games we can possibly imagine, and then you, the fans, get to vote at the end. And today, for our maiden voyage, for our debut episode, technically debut episode, because this is technically a relaunch, uh, we have the, the dulcet tones of Daz from Did You Know Gaming. Hello, Daz. Hello, how's it going? It's going pretty friggin' excellent. Uh, not only are you the uh, recent voice of uh, Did You Know Gaming, and kind of popped up in the past few years, right? Because I've been following for a while, and uh, in the grand yeah, so scheme of things, you're somewhat recent. I've been with Did You Know Gaming for, uh, since it, it was basically, since it was made. Right. But uh, we kind of decided to have other guests voice our videos. I remember that. And then we kind of got to a point where we were like, well, we want to make three videos a week. We want to make two videos a week. And we couldn't keep asking that many people to, to do voiceovers, especially when you've got to like redo bits, yeah. you know? No, there's literally um, nothing worse than relying on guests for a show. I hate it. Right. And so it, it just kind of, I, I never intended to do the voiceover. I just, uh, I just wound up being the one that did. Yeah. And, and my friend Greg, who also got on board sort of uh, around the time when I started doing voiceovers as well. Did, did, did they kind of single you out for having a particularly sultry voice? Uh, no, actually. No? It's because I was the only one uh, that didn't have a particularly strong accent. Oh. Um, <laughs> so it kind of works out, you know. Yeah. I, I've got a, like a, you know, somewhat more generic British man accent rather yes. than... You know, what's heavy. funny is like you know we 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 we're, we're considered to have quite strong accents to non-British people. I think. Uh, I mean, right, right. it's funny that you know within this hard drive, hard drive, largely an American company with largely an American viewer base, and for the first episode of this new show, British invasion, two Brits, and uh, yeah, yeah. I was thinking about that, and I was wondering if there was going to be any sort of like cultural stuff that we bring up that's just not going to make. Any I, sense I was thinking that, like, I nearly, I, I won't spoil it, but I nearly had Greg's in my pitch. And I had to oh, cut no. it because I was like, they don't know what Greg says. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, like, uh, you know, to us, we, we sound perfectly pedestrian, but to them, like, oh, British people, they're, they're so posh and fancy. I'm, I'm going to have to put the subtitles on for this <laughs> one. <Yeah. laughs> so, um, Daz, you also um, are the, the, the mind behind uh, the VG resource and, like, these... Um, I didn't get a chance to do much digging because my Twitter account got permanently suspended shortly before right, I did. Yeah. Um, but you're you're behind some like some some sprite resource websites, right? Yeah. So I've been running. Uh, it's it's a website called the Spriters Resource. Mm -hmm. um, it also has some other offshoot websites. So collectively, it's the VG Resource. But basically, I've been doing it for around twenty years, I would say now. Wow. Um, and it is a sort of archive collection of graphics extracted from retro video games. Um, so it, I don't know how technical to go really, but basically sprite rips are like all of the frames of the animations in yeah. the old video games. And you can use it to analyze how to do your own sprites and, and how to basically do animation. Yeah. Um, and it's just been one of those little passion projects I've been doing since I was a teenager. For what it's worth, back in the uh, the primordial days of YouTube, back in like 2009, 2008, I used to be really into uh, mixed Pokemon spriting, which is where... Oh yeah, splicing. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, you'd get yeah. a couple of Pokemon sprites up in MS Paint and like combine them and make the make Flamehead the worst abomination yeah, yeah. you've ever seen. You know, <laughs> I had no That's artistic skill. Back in the day, we used to just edit the sprites and then try and like, you know, make your own character. But look, it's like Sonic the Hedgehog. And, yeah. And oh, it's Mega Man, but yeah. I've made him look like a real person, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah, you, you guys, shout out to, to you guys. People people like you are my golden gods back in the day. So oh, I, I appreciate it. Very it's so funny how, like, when we were doing it, obviously it had a certain appeal, but over the years, video games have expanded so much, and now, mm -hmm. like, all of that work that we had done over those years is still of significant value to so many people. Yeah, now it's like, just... oh, we've had a genuine impact on art. 
Right, and I had no idea, right? Mm -hmm. At the time, I just wanted to make comics, so, yeah. you know. So, um, Daz, as is Lane Design Conference tradition, and as it's going to continue to be Lane Design Conference tradition, I must prone you for a fun fact, probe you, that was the right word I was looking for, uh, about yourself. Can you dazzle us with something truly mind-blowing about yourself? Uh, I'm trying to remember how long ago it was, but kind of, you know, mid-YouTube journey, I was invited by Konami to go to Japan to uh, uh, have a look at Ground Zeroes before it came out. Oh, really? And uh, the thing about their trip is that they that was at a time when they would, you know, shower the press with all sorts of lovely uh, sort of parts. Back when they made video games. Back when they actually <laughs> made money from video games, right? <laughs> but, but they took us to a Konami-branded hotel that was in this really small town in the middle of Japan. <laughs> And they had vending machines with like free, everything's free. Um, and it would serve alcohol and coffee and all sorts oh of stuff. Oh my god. And we wound up, I was there with uh, with uh, Aaron from Game Grumps. Really? And, wow, uh, okay. I was a huge fan back in the day. That was, that was the first time I had met him and it was just like a really weird experience. We, we went and had a sauna together and stuff. It was very strange. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> But we, I basically, my, my fun fact is that I managed to get very drunk and attempt to do karaoke with Hideo Kojima. Oh my god, uh, no way. Which, I, I don't think he was particularly responsive towards it, but uh, I, I had a great time. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, wasn't, he wasn't huge on a karaoke then. No, it's, uh, he, I think that he was, you know, he must have, that must have been the seventh or eighth time they had invited all this press out to this hotel. Yeah, and He must yeah. have been super tired by then. There, there is a tweet with me in the picture on his account. Oh my um, god. Where he found me and Aaron went back into like the room where they had the game set up and we were just playing it like after hours or whatever. Yeah. And he was just like, oh, some people wanted to keep playing. <laughs> And it's just a shot of the back of my head, and everyone was like, "Oh, that must be Susie, Aaron's girlfriend." <laughs> does, does Kojima speak much English? I mean, he tweets in English. But he doesn't speak barely any. any right. Barely any. Okay. Yeah, he knows, you know, a little bit, like a thank you, hello, yeah. etc. You know. Okay, well there you have it. Um, sorted with Aaron from Game Grumps and did karaoke with Hideo Kojima. The shipping community is going wild right now. That is awesome. That's what. That's one of the coolest stories I've heard. Oh okay. really? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't talk to a lot of cool people, to be honest. No. <laughs> my, my life is very boring, actually. Okay, well, um, I believe then it's time to make our presentations, Daz. It's time to bring our games to the Lane Design Conference. Um, usually, I let my guests go first, but since this is technically the first episode, I want to uh, give the viewers and yourself uh, kind of a, a, a good rundown of how this goes. So if it's okay with you, I will take the proverbial mic stand, and I For shall sure. wow absolutely. the audience with my pitch. So um, my pitch um, is going to double up as a bit of a history lesson today. When I was, when I was growing up, uh, my favourite games were 3D platformers. I grew up on Spyro and Crash and Sonic Adventure 2 specifically, but Sonic Adventure as a whole. I love those games, they were awesome to me, and then one day it feels like I woke up in the late 2000s and they were just gone. They just disappeared off the face of the earth. Um, sure. And I never really got any closure on that. I, I yearn for the days that they will come back, but I've accepted that they probably won't. At the same time, uh, corporations are very much on top in video games right now. You've got battle passes, live services, NFT integration, you know, everything that's going on with Fortnite. They've got like five or six different corporate mascots in that game by now. So I, I have to kind of resign myself to the fact that if 3D platformers are ever going to come back, I am unfortunately relying on a big corporation. And there is precedent for it. You know, there was Cool Spot and uh, Yo Noid and Pepsi Man back in the day. Dude, Cool Spot, I genuinely, I used to love that game. It, Never got past the first level, but you know, it was great. <laughs> I don't know what Cool Spot is. He's an American. What is oh, he? Oh, it's um, he's like the the little red dot on the Seven Up Bowl. <laughs> so stupid. <laughs> Why does he <laughs> yeah. have a video game? <laughs> because you know, you can make anything into a video game. At it's the like, very beginning of the game, he pops off of the bottle as it washes up onto a beach. And that's like his origin story, is it? That's his origin now story. Now he has to yeah. run and jump. Okay. <laughs> and collect. He gets a seven up, so he gets seven lives in one go. But he's on the seven up, so he's collecting the things that he's on. Yeah, he also. Yeah, he has to collect like spots. I don't. I this don't is a understand. paradox, and he should have yeah. opened a wormhole and opened a black hole and destroyed all of reality by now. Not very <laughs> cool cool spot. I had a M&M's Shell Shocked on PS1, which is a, oh, wow. the, the M&M's 3D platformer, which was just a <laughs> hard rip-off of Crash Bandicoot. You know, like, yeah, yeah. It had the same like camera facing them while they run away from the screen levels and stuff like that. So if I want the 3D platformer to come back, I have to rely on a company, and that's okay. 
I am willing to, to let this happen. I will sell my soul to bring back the 3D platformer. Today, I am pitching Michelin Man Adventures. Now you're thinking, okay, a Michelin Man, but why Michelin? Well, because they're not very relevant right now, and I think they want to get back into the zeitgeist. And what, what better way than through the medium of video games, right? Uh, by the way, our illustrator is called Cheesy, and if at any point you have a request you'd like to make for the eventual illustration, you can just, it's great, you can just tell Cheesy to do it, and he does it for us, it's amazing. I love that. I, I also, I'm somewhat famous because of Cheesy, which is a, a video game on the PS1. I've <laughs> right? my friend Jim Cadicarus. Uh, yes. And his, uh, in the video for it that he did about Cheesy, I'm in the introduction. Oh, okay, um, awesome. He does a little song about me. But there you go, you've already got an affinity for Cheesy, I'm sure he'll, yeah, I'm so sure I, the, I, the illustration Cheesy will number one fan, that. number yeah. one fan. Yeah, he'll respond to that, he'll make your illustrations extra nice and have huge bias you in, in them. Yeah, Cheesy, if I can get like a Super Mario 64 style front cover with the Michelin Man in like a fun little environment with some little enemies, you know, just, have, just having a great time, just having a blast. Um, the Michelin Man, fun fact, uh, he's, he's, so he's, he's made out of tires. Um, he's made out of entirely white tires, because back in the day when Michelin and the company started, tires were white. Um, and at first you think this sounds kind of charming, you know, it's very corporate branded, but it's a 3D platform, it should be fun. But you have to consider the Michelin Man is made of tires. His structural integrity is very much in doubt. Uh, he's also over a hundred years old, so I don't think he's very agile. In fact, I think controlling him feels like the worst thing you've ever done in your life. I think jumping is about a four or five second ordeal where he has to like work his <laughs> knees up to it, maybe hold his feet and legs together as he does it. And he probably does the most pathetic little hop. One of those like little kick jumps. You yes. Know, where they don't really jump. They just kick one leg and then the other one. <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> trying to get up on a curb. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he can do that like at most. So back in the day when Michelin first started, back in the early 1900s, cars were a luxury accessory. You know, they were only owned by the affluent and the wealthy. And so in a lot of the early marketing materials, the Michelin man was depicted as uh, smoking cigars and drinking a lot of wine. And so I think that's what you're collecting because he's over 100 years old and that's the only thing that fuels him anymore. Uh, so. I don't want to say that you get a speed boost after you collect them, but I want to say you go slightly less slow <laughs> when you collect <laughs> them. <laughs> like you've injected some very temporary life back into them. Remind them of the good old days, right? Yeah, exactly. Remember when you could move? When cars were like real men. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bring back when men were men and they could do triple jumps and wall jumps and backwards <laughs> long jumps up endless flights of stairs. So the Michelin Man, the other thing is that, you know, obviously um, every platformer has like their signature move. Michelin Man is a tire, so he rolls. But again, doing this roll is a painstakingly long process that requires him to get down on one knee. I think, I don't know if he has knees. I don't really know how it works when you're made of tires, but... I never really thought about that. Yeah, he gets down he like runs, the, the, but... the middle tire of his left leg or whatever, <laughs> and then the right one, and then he slowly, just pathetically, just barrel rolls, you know, like a slow <laughs> yeah. stop, drop, and roll. Um, he has to put the hands down on the floor first before he gets on the floor. Yes. Properly, like, fetal position first. Yes. <laughs> and I think he's panting and complaining about it the whole time. And the game, the level design will frequently encourage you to use this role. In fact, you'll be forced to use this role time and time again. You'll need to get through vents, through tight spaces. You are constantly having to initiate the five to ten second process of pushing the button and just watching this whole long animation play out where he's like, right, here we go. Oh, oh Jesus. Oh, Christ. You know, can't do this anymore. <laughs> Same voice line recording every time you do it. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> yeah. Complaining about how he hasn't collected any wine in, or cigarettes in, in however long, even though he's just had one. You know, you just had one Michelin man. Get over it. Maybe the kind of signature level of the game is, uh, is based in Paris because they're a French company. And uh, yes, you will have to climb the Eiffel Tower. Um, and in any other 3D platform, you're like, that sounds fun. I'd love to go up the Eiffel Tower. For the Michelin man, it's like this just getting up will probably take like three hours of gameplay. <laughs> I can picture that being like the flagpole in Mario, you know, at the yes. end of every level and you've just got to climb it and everyone. Yeah, he, he like collapses onto it. He's very old. I also think, you know, he's over a hundred years old and all he does is smoke and drink and he's from a bygone era. I think he's probably very unpleasant, you know? He's just been plopped into this modern world. I reckon he looks around and I was like, oh, I don't know about all these black ties. It was like, Michelin man, why don't you get with the goddamn times? He's terrible to control. He's terrible to listen to. No one likes him. And uh, at the end of the level, finally, um, he will put you out of your misery when you collect the big collectible at the end of the level. Of course, 
What else could it be but the Michelin star? <laughs> he gets the Michelin star at the end of every level. And a fun little, little history lesson as well. Uh, the Michelin star is actually, uh, like, that's a that's a restaurant thing, right? They award these yeah, to, yeah. to restaurants for how good the chefs are. That is, is that actually done. Thing? Sorry? Is that a UK thing or is that like a... It's a France, I, I don't know, it's a France thing, I guess, because they're a French company. Okay. So it's yeah, done yeah. by this same company. The same company who sell tires and make the Michelin Man also award the Michelin stars. It's the same company. Right. Because back in the day, when they first started selling cars, they needed to feel like people were justified in their purchase. So they published travel guides, which basically listed a whole bunch of good places to travel and to visit. Uh, namely restaurants, which would they, mm -hmm. they would award a star, a star rating. And be like, this has three Michelin stars. Go, go to this one. That's where the Michelin star comes from, and that's what we kind of think. It's weird that you, you kind of, I don't, I wouldn't necessarily rely on a tire company to, uh, to tell me what food to eat. No, me know? neither. But you know, no Twitter, no fact checking back in the 1900s. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> and uh, hey, it's turned out to be pretty prestigious. Apparently, they did know what they were talking about. So props to them. But it's a very yeah. weird, very eclectic thing that they do. It's strange because now it's just TripAdvisor, right? Yeah. I mean, Exactly. That, that's refused. why they need to make a game, you know? Yeah. Because TripAdvisor They've got to get is... back into the relevance. <laughs> yeah. TripAdvisor is squeezing... I think TripAdvisor is a UK thing. I think that's our first cultural reference, but... Uh, yeah, yeah. For, for, oh, is it? Oh, God. <laughs> for Americans, TripAdvisor tells us where it's good to go. So, there you have that's, it. That's about it, yeah. we, we need to speak slowly for them, because they you know... The final kicker is that after you've collected all the Michelin stars and you're about to fight the final boss, the final boss is locked off from you unless you can provide a code, which is the product ID of a Michelin product you've bought in the last year. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> Basically on disc DLC, have you purchased from our company recently? Cool, you can finish the game. And it, it can't be a pre-owned one, no, right? No, absolutely not. Oh man. And they probably do background checks. They're like, did, did his dad give this to him? Or, you know, he bought this, let's just make sure. They're not, with with they, his money, right? Yeah, yeah, they're not code sharing. This isn't Netflix, yeah. you know? <laughs> So there you have it, Cheesy. Enjoy that Michelin Man Adventures. That's my pitch. People of the Lane Design Conference, I can hear your raucous applause. Thank you. Yes. What's really interesting, I have to say, is that when you were talking about Pepsi Man, obviously a lot of people don't know what Pepsi Man is, yeah. but like, I can actually picture the Michelin Man doing the whole run <laughs> like the Pepsi Man. Yes. It needs to be said, he won't be doing that because he would not be quite so out of breath. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be like hobbling most places. <laughs> right. Again, he's over 100 years old, he's made out of tires. This is like a 3D platformer if you were controlling the guy from Quop. So there you have it. There's my pitch. Excellent. Well done. Thank you. Thank very you very good. much. Thank you, everyone. It's a pleasure. I, I love being back. Daz, okay. Uh, now you've so, got to follow that. So best of luck. Your pitch, please, for the Lane Divine Conference. I I feel bad already before we go in because I'm also essentially going to be bragging on really old people. So <laughs> let's go. No, I love it. I love ages. The concept for my game is that I don't know if you remember back in the day on the PS2, SquareSoft before they were Square Enix, they released a game called The Bouncer. I've and heard it was, of it. It was a 3D fighting game, right? So my game is the Gentleman's Bouncer. <laughs> and it's got none of the fighting and none of the plot like the bouncer. It doesn't have any of the anime cutscenes. Instead, it's based in a country club in Snetterton, just off the M11. Okay. Where you essentially play the bouncer to this gentleman's club, and you have to make sure that the patrons don't get too drunk. Mm -hmm. And the only patrons that they're going to have are going to be, you know, the sort of lady of a certain age who's uh, widowed and has the, the leftover remnants of the estate. and So you're fighting off an be... army of rich old people. Right. But I without mean, really, any of the fighting, just just verbally fighting to make sure that they, they don't drink too much, they just stay sensible, because you're a gentleman. You basically have to make sure that no one is getting too drunk when they're regaling stories about their children who are working in the banks in London <laughs> and whatnot, because it's just down the M11, you know, yeah. it's not too far, so they can still visit. This is very, and... the Americans are like, this is a foreign language to me, and I love it, let's exclude them <laughs> as much as possible. That's it, when I was, I was going, Snetterton, that's a good one. No one <laughs> yeah. knows where Snetterton is. <laughs> I don't know where Snetterton is. <laughs> <laughs> well, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so you n you mainly need to analyze whether they're too drunk, like in L.A. Noir with the like facial animations. So you have to make sure that no one is getting too pissed. And the way you have to do that is by checking these animations, which were generated by an AI based <laughs> on prompts. So you know that none of it is really going to kind of come together as it's supposed to. And all of the dialogue also generated by AI. Oh, so brilliant. we can go with every direction for any different career path that their children have had. <laughs> uh, 
we can go with uh, all of the different events going on in the local area, you know, the local farmers markets and whatnot. It, it sounds like they'd be talking to you like Shenmue. When that guy's yeah, like, he's exactly. a guy who's Chinese. <laughs> the best thing about this game, obviously, is that because you're a gentleman bouncer, mm-hmm. you cannot skip the dialogue. Because <laughs> you, you can't cut people off if of you're a gentlemanly bouncer. That's for the normal bouncers when yeah. they're chucking people out. You yeah, know, they'll, they'll cut you off straight away. Uh, so the main gameplay loop is obviously listening to all of these people. And you're going to find out after like 20 hours that you actually did need to concentrate on what they were telling <laughs> so you. All this stuff was really important. But like Tunic, they haven't like given you like a, a notebook or anything in the game that keeps track of any of it. You've got to actually remember this and keep notes in the back of the instruction book. If I mm-hmm. uh, don't think games come with instruction books anymore. It, it, so that it's might very be immersive in, in dealing with old people, you know, having to write down notes to remember stuff. Right, exactly. Yeah. So it's like you, you, it really wants you to feel this guy because he's going to be an old dude as well. So he's not going to be moving around quickly around the club to try and like get to all of the, the patrons and whatnot. Uh, so you also have to uh, remember these things because at the end of the game, in order to get the true ending, you have to compile a scrapbook of all your happy memories. Okay. Because you've just enjoyed the whole journey of learning about all of these people that you care about oh so deeply. Uh, because not only is it based in this country club, there's also the traveling and the the development of your character so to get to the country club because it's quite remote you have to take the bus from town and so you can't skip that journey either Uh, you've made a game where you talk to old people and do public transport right i have a migraine just thinking about it these are the moments that we just we overlook we all experience (laughs) these things but none of us concentrate on them we just Uh kind of let that happen we don't even talk about it in passing with our friends they just happened yeah and because you're a gentleman, obviously, on this on this bus, people think you're very approachable, so they're going to talk to you as well. And they'll tell you all sorts of shit, because, you know, we're talking about a bus here. Is any of that uh, important? Have you got a note down of stuff that people say to you on the bus as well? No, see, this is the best bit. None <laughs> of that's important. You're never going to see those people again. So okay. you need to remember to not remember. Mm-hmm. Because you've, there's certain details. We're not, you're not going to know what details are important, obviously. Yeah. But there are some details you don't need to remember, but there's going to be plenty of those. So, the, you know, flavor text, right? You've yeah. got to it gives some depth to this world so i guess on the bus you're trying to write in your scrapbook and whatever but you're constantly getting pestered by people who are telling you their whole entire backstory and children and you know all of these people that you've got they're not even going to give you any benefit because they can't like recommend anything you're going to give you like any care towards or they're they're not involved at all and you can't skip them still because you're a gentleman so at no point can you just like get off the bus wait for the next one you have to engage as a as a lifelong pedestrian this is like the opposite of escapism this is like (laughs) engaging with more of the parts of my life that i don't like this is the thing i was thinking about like you know we've got farming simulator now right Mm -hmm. and mostly retired farmers play it so i'm thinking those old bouncers who still want a bit of the the action but they can't get it out there anymore they're a little bit past it and they just want to remember the good times with all those people that they really you know, they really cared for when yeah. they were being talked to by them. Yeah, no, maybe, maybe we as a society do forget about retired bouncers, you know? Maybe there's exactly. maybe there's a market there. I mean, I just sort of thought, Squaresoft, they tried to cover what bouncing is really like in the bouncer, but <laughs> I don't have, like, a full-body tattoo. I don't have the, like, snarky attitude. I'm no. not going to be uh, having my girlfriend stolen by ninjas no. in, like, a corporate uh, espionage plot device of well, you know action and drama too soon. so there was one other point i wanted to make which is your inventory and your equipment this is a very important detail to the game because of okay. course if you want to rise up in the ranks and get a pay rise you need to get battery a job yeah so you need to get new outfits and you need to go through experiences to have new skills so that you can analyze and ask more questions in return you need to learn how to communicate with these patrons so you have to go and shop for your suit, go and get it pressed after every single uh, uh, day doing your work, or evening rather. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and based on the mini game of pressing your suit jacket will be your health during these <laughs> situations because you have to have reactions to all of the bollocks that these people are telling you. Yeah, this is the Red Dead Redemption 2 shrinking horse balls part, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> we're just going to go too far with realism. Well, you've got to get all the fine details in yeah. there, otherwise it's not really immersive. Yeah, you know? it's not and really video impressive, games is it? Are, The whole point of video games, if you watch any award show, it's the most immersive thing. Yeah. The, it's the, the whole reason, just to get inside that world, really feel like you're there, to be immersed. Yes. You know? If there's anything you learn from the Lane Design Conference today, it's that video games should be like real life. Right. It exactly. should be just like it. 
that is truly horrendous and you know what it scares me is that like I genuinely don't think it's totally out of the realm of possibility for a company like Square Enix obviously they've already done the bouncer but I think of the quiet man as well right like oh right yeah like attempts, with the FMVs yeah yeah oh god their attempts at like uh, servicing a group of people who don't usually get video games about them have just not gone very well and I can yeah. see them being like what about retired bouncers <laughs> The CEO is like, excellent, we'll get to working it right after these NFTs. So, uh, yeah, it, it sounded kind of fun at first. I was like, oh, yeah, you know, stopping people get drunk, people get rowdy. Like, maybe you, uh, like, sneak some water in someone's glass or something while they're not looking. Yeah, yeah. And do all this Try and, of, like, ooh, steal yeah, some drinks. Ooh. Sober people up and, and all up, but no, but you, you're just talking to old people through our skip. But they, you know, we're talking like Monopoly Man people. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. so they, and everything they have to say is just really. You don't need to hear it. They're the Michelin man. Or like, it's like talking to a bunch of Michelin men. On the, on <laughs> right, the <bus>. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> well, excellent. There you have it. The the game, the lane design conference crowd right now are absolutely raucous. They're off the feet. Someone has just Jeez, passed out in the audience, which we we'll have to get health and safety on that. But oh, that is the first edition of the lane design conference on hard drive. Uh, if you enjoyed, maybe you should subscribe to see more because there's tons more coming with tons more fun guests. Uh, Daz, are there any shout outs you'd like to give? Where, the, where can the people find you? Uh, so I run a website called The Surprise Resource. You can just look it up. Uh, it's, I'm not going to give you the URL. That's really boring. Uh, I'll, put we're the, also... I'll put it in the description. Oh, yeah. There's also that. Uh, and I also do Did You Know Gaming, uh, which is a very popular YouTube channel, which you can also check out. And whenever I do any kind of shout out or anything, I always tell people to just, you know, show some love to your family, show some love to your friends. That's the best thing you can possibly do. I'm just a guardian that you can ignore me. You can't ignore your family and friends. Yep, and also be sure to subscribe to Did You Know Gaming because as far as I'm aware, I believe that um, Did You Know French tyre companies are starting up pretty soon. And uh, It's true. I'm of the understanding you'll be putting in a pretty good word for your boy. <laughs> of course. Well, there will be, I think we'll do a straw poll. I have done it before. There will be a straw poll link in the comments, in the pinned comment, where people can vote, vote for, for which pitch was the worst, who had the worst pitch. Uh, and that will be up active for a week. People will be able to vote for a whole week after this episode goes live. And at the conclusion of the next episode with my next guest, we'll have the reveal of uh, whether or not you won and join the Hall of Lame and beat me on the first episode, which would have me absolutely inconsolable. Or if I, I, I would be so honoured. I would I be would so honestly, upset. It would be it would be my fun fact for whenever I appear on. Any I beat other Fudge show. on the first episode of the Lame Design Conference. That's way more fun than doing karaoke with Adoga Jeeva. Yeah, I mean he's just a guy. Else. He's yeah. just a guy, you know. There you have it. Well, uh, we'll see you next time. Hope you guys enjoyed. Brilliant. Thank you.